Good afternoon. I'd like to call the order. Oklahoma City Metropolitan Area Public Trust, August 14th, 2012. First item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the July 17th, 2012 Oklahoma City Metropolitan Area Public Schools Trust meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. We'll vote. <laughs> motion passes. Next item on the agenda is to approve change orders and amendments. We have several change orders. Uh, Mr. Todd, you want to walk us through them? And I'm assuming that if there's no questions or concerns, we can approve them all at once. Mr. Todd? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> I'll hit the high points on uh, item A, <clears throat> change order for Columbus, Columbus at Jackson School. This is a, a wood ceiling issue. The, the existing building had a wood ceiling that was inside of a, a drop ceiling, the fire marshal is requiring that to be removed. Item B, <clears throat> Hawthorne Elementary. This is a result of a change of schedule based on the new school calendar because of the phasing that was previously set up. This is really played, wreaked havoc with that, so this is the, the resultant of, of that, the $72,000 on that. Item C, which is Thelma Parks. The uh, largest one on here is the restroom revisions. <clears throat> this is a, a remodel like many of the schools are, and there, was a, there is a large restroom in this school, and staff advise us that it would be best to separate this restroom into two smaller restrooms so that the, the little guys aren't in there with the, with the big guys. So this is, this is to separate that. And then there's some additional data drops that the uh, district has requested. On uh, D, on Rancho Village, <clears throat> again, uh, ceiling removal for an old school that's wood that the fire marshal does not want to leave in there. Then there's also some uh, electrical equipment in the kitchen. There's some plumbing modifications. A water line was discovered that was up in the ceiling that wasn't... Uh, easily seen during the uh, design, but we do have a credit on item nine, a th almost $35,000 credit, because we're leaving the tile in and, and not pulling that up and putting in carpet. We're just gonna put tile on top of tile. Item E for Spencer Elementary. <clears throat> Again, item number one is a credit of $8,655, they were able to reconfigure the uh, acoustic isolation plan in that school. And item three, $16,000 to remove some uh, mechanical equipment. Many times because of, of budget, we leave things like this out, knowing that we'd like to do it, but afraid that we can't afford it. But when the bids come in favorably, we can come back and do some of these items. So this will give them a, a new area that they can use for storage and take out some some equipment that is no longer in service. Item F is a change order for Class and School of Advanced Studies. As you recall, we've seen this several times here um, before you. Most of these are pretty small items that we just continue to see. Little um, roof drain, plumbing, additional electrical outlets on item five that was requested by the district. We are getting really close to wrapping this up. This, this project will be wrapped up. And in, in fact, the next item is on uh, G, is the actual amendment to the architectural contract <clears throat> that will allow us to do that phase two that we talked about a couple of months ago for, for class and SAS. And a lot of these things are, are items that the architect already uh, designed and had in his plans, but, but couldn't afford them with the budget we had. But, but now the school has identified some uh, other funds. So as we go on with this second phase, that's what this amendment is for. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions on items A through G? We do have uh, someone in the office audience that wants to speak on behalf of class and SAS. 
uh, Pam Newby, would you like to speak now, or do you want? Okay, all right. Seeing no questions or concerns, I entertain a motion to approve all change orders, amendments, items A through G. I move to approve all change orders. There's a motion. Second. Motion and a second. We'll vote. Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Todd. The next item on the agenda, item four, is to accept Shiloh Elementary School project and place the maintenance bond into effect. This is project ES0038. Talk. Madam Vice Chairman, we're glad to bring you another final today at, at Shidler Elementary. This is at 1415 South Byers, um, about three and a half million dollar project, as I said, that is, is now final and we're asking you to accept it as final. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. We'll vote. <laughs> Motion passes. Next item on the agenda, item five, is the John W. Rex Elementary School. Item A is to approve contract for sale of land and redevelopment with Oklahoma City Urban Renewal Authority for the new downtown elementary school, $200,000. This is project ES0035. Ms. Todd. Um, Madam Vice Chairman, if it's OK with you, since these are all connected, I think we might want to just discuss discuss the whole issue at hand as okay. we go along items a through c yes ma'am okay go ahead. Um, but, but starting with a this is a, a contract for sale for the land with urban renewal we had five hundred thousand dollars identified in the uh, pip they're selling it to us for 200 so that gives us three hundred thousand dollar savings on the land itself but moving on to the school itself Staff, I believe, handed out some documents to you. Last, uh, last meeting, it was discussed the, the cost per square foot, and you wanted some information on that. <clears throat> so what I've done, if you'll refer to your sheets now, the only two elementaries that Maps for Kids did completely as new schools was Martin Luther King and Cesar Chavez elementaries. You can see that Martin Luther King was, was uh, bid in March of 05 and Chavez in, in May of 09. So you, you'll know that things cost more now. So it, it's not easy to do a direct comparison, but the numbers there show that ML King was 97.73 per square foot, and Chavez was 125 and a quarter per square foot. If you extrapolate those numbers, you'll see it was about a 7% increase from 05 to 09. If, if you use a straight linear regression on that. <clears throat> As you extend that on to current costs, and continuing that 7% for the next four years, you can see what I have over there in the column of present cost. That's where we're trying to get everything to where it looks in today's dollars. Um, you can see that the downtown elementary scheme four that we talked about that you approved the schematics on, and then we talked about the architect's amendment, is the last line, elementary scheme for $14,250,000 and 79,000 square feet. It works out to be $180.38 per square foot. I'd like to point out that on today's agenda, we have two bond projects, preliminary reports, S7-0005 and 0006. And over to the right, you can see what the architects have estimated their cost per square foot for those projects. And those were classrooms and gyms. Granted, smaller projects, they're three to four million, I believe, somewhere in that range. But still, I think gives us a, a, a reasonable idea of where we are today in cost per square foot. Now, if you'll also refer to the, the second sheet that I gave you here. This was taken out of a report, a group called School Planning and Management. And this is the February 2010 report. It was the last one that I could find. <clears throat> but they track costs. And I'm sorry it's kind of blurry. I, I took it off their PDF and tried to blow it up. But you can see where they track the costs of schools from 95 until 2009. The red dots are the elementary schools. And what that last number up there in 2009 says $185 per square foot as an average. 
So my point being that, that our $180 per square foot, while it may seem high, is right in the average according to the report, and then it also comes in where we should be in accordance with the preliminary reports that we've got today for the bond projects. Um, just as a summary for the project, it was $9 million in the PIP. And then um, TIF District has given us another million and a half. Project contingency will have a million and a half. And then um, the Quality Schools Group, the, the John Rex Board, is, is giving us 2.4. And that includes, and, and that's construction money. There's also m more monies in there for the contingency, and, and part of that 2.4 is architectural fees. Now that I've beaten you to death with numbers, um, Mr. Kirk Humphreys is here to talk about the school. With your permission, ma'am, I'd, I'd like to turn it over to, to Mr. Humphreys, and, and he can give you an overview on the, on the school itself. Thank you. Mr. Humphreys, how are you? Madam Chairman, thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, I'd like to uh, start by just saying a word of thanks to the trust. This trust has been in existence for almost 11 years. Um, it was my pleasure as mayor to appoint all the trust members at that time. And Valerie and JW and, and uh, Pat's not here today, uh, Carl, those, you all have been there the whole time. Uh, I just want to thank you. Uh, uh, the key to MAPS um, is trust. It's delivering what we promise. And you've done that uh, without a whisper of controversy or uh, uh, any kind of impropriety in handling the public's money in any way. Um, and so I just want to thank you. I think it's extraordinary that uh, city staff has done this over these many years uh, with the excellence we expected of them. Uh, but then you've done it. Um, uh, others like Claudia and Carrie have come on more recently. But uh, you served for a long time. You served, I think, with, with great distinction. Uh, the public has great trust in this board. And, uh, and so I just want to say thank you for that. And uh, it's, it's a long time. And you only have about two years left. Um, but you know, when you talk about turning an urban school district around, that's a long project. I, I just met with a group from Columbus, Georgia, that's going to come in for an inner city visit uh, in a couple of months. And they're very interested in what we're doing with Maps for Kids. And I told them that when we approved Maps for Kids, we thought it would take 10 years to build the bricks and mortar. It's taken a little bit longer than that, but we've, we've pretty much done it on time and on schedule. Very complex uh, issues you've dealt with. But then it probably would take another 10 years to change what's going on, uh, finish changing what's going on inside the buildings. The district's made uh, some significant progress in the last 10 years. Um, test scores are better. There was a good article last week where the high school test scores are better. That's significant. Uh, what the downtown elementary school is all about is to re-engage the community in a way they've not been engaged. And that's really re-engaging the community by giving them ownership. Um, John Rex Elementary is a partnership between our nonprofit group, OKC Quality Schools Incorporated, and the Oklahoma City Public Schools. And, and the board uh, is appointed jointly between those two bodies. It's a, a true 50-50 partnership, and um, our board's been meeting for some months now, the, the John Rex board. Uh, we are in the final stages of interviewing to hire the principal for the school, even though start date's about two years out. So things are working. People are going, just like you have for 11 years, those folks are now going about their task of, of uh, starting a new school from scratch. Um, there, I can give you an update on some of the issues like attendance boundaries and things of that nature. Uh, this school, in a sense, fell through the cracks in one way. Uh, one, one of the reasons the city saw fit to add some more money from TIF and uh, contingency was that when Maps for Kids was approved, we weren't putting gymnasiums on every elementary school. When, we did the, two, when the district did the 2007 bond issue, they put in a, a gymnasium. major component of that was a new gymnasium for every school, every, every elementary that didn't have one. Well, the downtown school kind of lost out on both counts. We didn't get 
a, a gymnasium in math for kids, and we didn't get a gymnasium in the 2007 bond issue because we didn't exist. And so in order to bring us up to the district standard, that helps fill that gap, that extra money from the city. Our group then has um, the agreement that you have before you is our commitment to fund $2.4 million in private funds to, uh, to help build this building. And that's, that's to, we have a different type of design on this than, than uh, a typical school. And so we have more square footage because of that. And we have some rooms like art space and so on that are not in every school. So we're adding to the square footage. Uh, the architects have told me that the design standards on this are the same as any other maps. You know, the level of finish is the same as any other maps school. But we are adding some square feet, so we're bringing more dollars to the table because of that. A particular interest on this school is who's it for? Uh, and our answer is it's for everybody. Um, our, our board, the John Rex board, we presented the proposed attendance boundaries at our last meeting. They'll be approved at our meeting coming up later this month. These boundaries have been agreed to by uh, representatives of the school district and by representatives from, from our board. Uh, but they're pretty straightforward. It, it, it's basically what most folks would call downtown. It's, it's uh, 10th Street on the north, it's Western Avenue on the west, it's the river on the south, and it's Lottie on the east. So it, it takes in the Health Science Center. Uh, there's one little notch up above 10th Street to encompass the rest of the Health Science Center as it reaches north of 10th Street. That's the only place we depart from a major road as, as a, a boundary. If a child lives within those boundaries, we'll be like any other school in the state. If they live there and they want to come to school here, we're going to enroll them. Um, then the second priority on enrollment will be children that live in the Oklahoma City School District but are in a school that's um, on the failing list. And if this is federal law, really, if, if they're in a failing school and they want to come to our school, we'll enroll them. Um, Third priority would be any child that lives in anywhere else in the Oklahoma City School District. Just no, no qualifications other than that. They will have to provide their own transportation if they live outside of our boundaries, but within Oklahoma City School District, they'll come in as a transfer and provide their own transportation. Then the last priority is people that live outside the school district. Uh, for those that live outside the school district, if, if their parent or guardian works within our boundaries, they'll get a preference just within among those who live outside. That's who, um, uh, that's who we see ourselves serving. I, I believe it, you know, it's been said that, oh, this is just, I'm going to speak in the colloquialism here, this is just for Devon executives. Well, it, it, it's for anybody. Um, even, even in Devon, there's a whole lot of folks that aren't executives. <laughs> you know, even in Sonic, there's a lot of folks that aren't executives. Um, and uh, I, I would love to see it be that, uh, that people are fighting to get into the school. Now, I hope that happens. don't know that it will. I think it will. Um, I, would, I would hope that it's so successful that folks even want to move into that downtown area in order to make sure their kids get into that school. And then once we succeed there, then I'd only like to do it 71 other times, whether it's our group or someone else where every school in Oklahoma City District, people want to get into it. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do is, is re-engage the private sector, re-engage the community. Uh, Valerie serves on the board of our, uh, of our nonprofit. And, uh, uh, we just want quality schools in Oklahoma City, and this is one step in that direction. I, I think it's extraordinary that Carl Springer and Angela Munson, Phil Horning, the other leaders of the school district, uh, have seen fit to to partner with us on this. Uh, the charter will be applied. We'll make the application. The district will make the application for the charter. It's, we don't think it's ever happened anywhere in America that a public school district has applied for a charter. Uh, but they're going to do that and apply to the University of Oklahoma. And then they will assign that charter, the benefits under that charter, and the obligations to the John Rex board. So that'll be the structure. Uh, and with that, I'll, I'll answer any questions that you have. Are there any questions? 
Well, I do want to say, Mr. Humphreys, that we appreciate the diligence of the uh, board for working on this and the investment, the private investment that will be made in this downtown school, serving on the trust for over 11 years. And now we're co coming close to the end that this is our last new project. It's exciting what, what we're investing. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I, I do want to say a word of thanks to Wiley Williams and the others in the city attorney's office for working out this agreement with us. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Todd, is there anything else on this issue? The only other thing that I failed to mention is that this being an urban school, there are additional costs because we don't have five to 15 acres of, of land for them to do construction. So that, that also affects our, our estimate. We've, we've got a multi-story building where usually the, the elementaries that we have are single story and they get to have EFIS or metal fronts, and this will be brick and more of a storefront urban school. So there are additional costs. It's, it's been estimated or suggested that that might be a million and a half dollars because of the confined space and, and, and those issues. So I, I failed to mention that. So that's all I have. If there are no questions, I'll entertain a motion to approve uh, items 5A, B, and C. I move to approve. There's a motion. Second. Motion and a second. We'll vote. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda, item six, concurrent items A and B. The first one, item A, concurrence with independent school district number 89 in approving the preliminary report I-89-2007 school bond issue project S. 7005 classrooms and gymnasiums at Mark Twain, Putnam Heights, Southern Hills, and Stan Wadey Elementary Schools. Mr. Todd. Madam Chairman, this, uh, items A and B are both uh, concurrence items for the, the bond projects that we have. And, and much like Mr. Humphreys was talking about, this, these are the projects that are providing the gymnasiums at, uh, at the elementary schools. And we ask for your, uh, your concurrence on these preliminary reports. If there are no objections, I'd like to have a motion on both items. So moved. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. A motion and second. We'll vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is an uh, item seven, update status on OC MAPS program. Mr. Clowers? <clears throat> Madam Chairman, members of the trust, um, there are still 27 schools in construction. Uh, construction is nearing completion on Oak Ridge Elementary, Cap Hill High School, and Class in SAS. Uh, Rogers School will receive bids on that October 2nd. Uh, there's one school in design, the John Rex Charter School, which you've heard about today. Uh, the admin building is on hold uh, for the time being. Uh, you realize that the um, uh, old Central High School was sold or is going to be sold to another party, so that uh, is no longer an option for the admin building. Um, I-89 bond projects, construction continues on Coolidge, Van Buren, and Hayes, uh, Wheeler, West Nichols Hills, and Monroe, and construction at Nichols Hills Elementary is on hold, as you recall, the issue with the, uh, with the gymnasium location. Um, final plan phase continues for classrooms and gyms at Parmalee, Hillcrest, and Pierce. That should be complete in uh, this month. And then final plans are still underway at Adams, Bodine, Horseman, and Kaiser. Those should be completed in September. Uh, Taft and Spiegel High School Stadium's preliminary report approval process is complete. And then preliminary reports for Mark Twain, Putnam Heights, Southern Hills, Stan Wadey, Buchanan, Gatewood, Johnson, Oak Ridge Schools, um, uh, gyms and classrooms additions are scheduled for board approval. Uh, well, that was on the board approval. Um, the last meeting and, and trust concurrence uh, today. So those were on your agenda today. A&E selection is underway for classrooms at, and gyms at Heronville, Fillmore, Prairie Queen, Rockwood, and Eugene Field Elementary Schools. Any questions for Mr. Klaus? Although we've been doing this for 11 years, it feels like we're still working through a lot of projects. It sounds really good. We're moving full steam ahead. Uh, item eight, comments from trustees? Any comments from staff? Comments from citizens? I think we have uh, Pam Newby. 
Thank you, Madam Chairman. I uh, appreciate the trust's commitment to class and SAS and your months of work and trying to do the right thing by these students. One of the things that the mayor talked about for his hope for the downtown school is a reality for Classen, in that there are hundreds of kids that are turned away every year from this school. And I appreciate the work that the trust is doing to try to do um, what was promised for our school. My question is more procedural. I know that there, my understanding is that the parking lot will be funded by the MAPS trust dollars, that there will be bond monies that hopefully will be approved for the rest of the project, which is probably going to be around $1.3 million. At least that's with the preliminary budget that will be presented to the Oklahoma City School Board on the, at the August 20th meeting, it's my understanding. So my, my question is, the school board, it's up to them to, to then um, pass that budget, and then does it come back here, or what happens next for our school? Mr. Todd, you want to take that question? Madam Vice Chairman, we're currently working with the school board to, to get all this done. As, as you saw today, there was an item there to, to proceed with the, the plans for that. It is bond money. The school does control the money. But uh, I, I'd have to ask my financial people exactly how that goes back and forth. But we've, we've done many, many projects that have bond money that we administrate. So it's, it's not a big deal. So at some point, I'm, I'm assuming that um, staff will come back with the trustee on a status report on where we are in the process since this is a little different than what we've done in, in yes, the past. Yes, yes. We'll, we'll, you'll see final plans okay. that, will, that will come through to be advertised for that phase two. Okay. Does that answer your question? It does. Thank you very much. And just to, once again, on behalf of the entire Oklahoma City Public School District, I'm a parent of one graduate from Oklahoma City Public Schools and two, two children that are in the district right now. I, I so appreciate the work that you all are doing and your commitment and stewardship of um, the students, parents, students, and staff. So thank you very much for your work. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, we have two other citizens that would like to comment. Uh, Ms. Karen Muller. And then we have a John Haitley. Haitley. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for the opportunity to present comments on behalf of myself um, and my husband, Steve Mueller, uh, regarding the Nichols Hills Elementary School gym. We bought our home next door uh, to the north of John and Cindy Haitley. Mr. Haitley's here also. About 29 years ago, actually this week. Uh, we've loved our neighbors and the neighborhood and being so close to the Nichols Hills Elementary School. And over the years, we have made uh, several substantial improvements to our, to our property. Um, we are very appreciative of the consideration that has been given to moving the gym from the west uh, side of the, of the school yard uh, where our property line uh, uh, joins or abuts to the east side. Uh, I wanted to bring to the attention of, of the trust members if you may not be aware, that we are also concerned with the issue, potential issue of drainage from the substantial dirt that has already been moved. Um, the site was elevated, I think that John would know exactly the number of feet, but I, I'm guessing at least 10 feet raised uh, in anticipation of the gym being placed there because the property slopes from the east side to the west boundary. So now what we have is a huge uh, elevated piece of red dirt that fortunately it has not, we, fortunately or not, we haven't had much rain during the last few months, but of course we know that that's going to change. And so it is our hope that any um, change order would encompass the removal of all the dirt uh, as well as trying to restore it to the way it sloped originally so that it will not create a hazard or future drainage problems for any of us uh, that live on, on Glenwood. Mr. Krause? <clears throat> yes, I believe that as a part of the change in the plans that's being done to relocate the gym, that not only will that area be regraded, but there will be a, a stormwater detention facility constructed on the site. David, can you confirm that? Let me know if I'm mistaken. Yes, sir. If you recall, this is a bond project 
that we administrate. Um, so obviously not just because it's a school, but it's also school money. They're, they're making a lot of the decisions, and we're working with them to make those decisions. But we've stopped construction. After Mr. Haley showed up the, the first time, I directed them to, to stop construction until we could get this taken care of. And now we're looking at uh, reevaluating the site and, and looking to see if we can move that gym to another site and to do things like detention. We're, we're developing our estimates and, and, and going in that direction. Okay. Does that answer your question, ma'am? Yes, it, it does. Thank you all very much. Appreciate Thank you. it. So. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Karen really covered all of my concerns, and, our, and like she said, our, and our main concern was the, the drainage issue and also the, uh, that the grade be changed back to the gradual slope that has existed uh, the 25 years I've lived there. And uh, the current issue is that it's a, a raised up platform that is higher than our fences and retaining walls along the back of our residence. So, it's a great viewing deck into our backyards right now. <laughs> so our, our main concern sounds as though it's being addressed by this change order, and we appreciate the attention uh, that you've given to this matter on our behalf. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It sounds like staff has a good handle on this, so I'm, I'm sure that they'll provide us an update at a later date. Thank you very much. Any other comments? If not, we'll adjourn. Thank you. <laughs>